If you already own or are thinking of buying a Lumix S1, an S1 with the V-Log Filmmakers upgrade, an S1R, or the just announced Lumix S1H, you might be concerned that the only lenses you have today are the 24 to 105 f4, the 50 millimeter f1.4, and the 70 to 200 f4. Just a paper cutout. There's more lenses coming from Panasonic and a bunch coming from Sigma, but did you know that you can adapt hundreds, if not thousands, of existing lenses, some that you may already own, to the L mount? I'm Photo Joseph, and let's talk about it. Because the S1 is a mirrorless camera, there's very little distance between the sensor and the lens mount, which means that pretty much any full frame or larger lens can be adapted to it. For anyone with a camera bag full of full frame lenses, this is great news. Odds are you can adapt your existing lenses to the S1. For example, Sigma makes the MC21 to convert Canon EF mount lenses to L mount, and they also make an SA mount adapter. Novaflex also makes an EF to L mount adapter, but it costs more than the Sigma and doesn't work as well doesn't even autofocus. They also make a Nikon F mount adapter and a PL mount adapter. Kipon makes a Mamiya 645 and a Cinema PL to L mount adapter. You can also adapt Hasselblad, you can adapt L39 mount, Contorex, Contax, Yashica, Exacta, Canon FD, Minolta, Pentacon. There's a ton of them. There's a ton of options for adapting lenses to L mounts. So how do these adapted lenses actually look and perform? Well, first, a huge thanks to Sigma, who sent me a case full of a lovely buffet full of photography and cinema lenses, and to my friends at Panasonic, who sent some adapters along with some vintage lenses for me to play with. I shot both stills and video with a variety of lenses just to give you a little taste of what these look like. Now let's start with the still photos. I took a few lenses to a modeling event and shot with the Nikon 24mm f2, the Mamiya 80mm f1.9, which because it's a medium format lens is on a 0.7x focal reducer, making it a 56mm f1.3, and with the Canon 85mm f1.2. So let's take a look at some photos. The Nikon 24 f2 was probably the hardest to focus with a lot of softness around the edges meant that I really had to focus in the center while relying on focus peaking, then recompose to get the shot that I wanted. I started wide, but I went in for some close-ups so you could appreciate the shallow depth of field of f2 on this 24 millimeter wide angle lens. It produced some interesting haloing and overall a pretty nice look. The medium format Mamiya was definitely my favorite because it created such a unique look. The bokeh has these great big swirls in it and high contrast areas pretty much glow, which is obviously not ideal for most work, but so cool in a portrait. It's probably not perfectly sharp anywhere while wide open, which may limit what you can do with it, but I adore it. Matt, you're gonna have to come here to get this one back. I'm sorry, buddy. The Canon 85 f1.2 has always been a gem of a lens. Wide open at 1.2, there isn't much margin for error on focus, but when you nail it, it's so, so sweet. Stopping down a little, of course, gives you a bigger field of focus while still getting lovely bokeh. And at 1.2 and at a distance from your subject, you can still get incredibly narrow depth of field. This is the first autofocus lens of the bunch, so let's talk about that. The Nikon and the Mamiya are, of course, manual focus on passive adapters, but the Canon EF lens on this Sigma MC21 is autofocus. As you would expect, autofocus is slower through the adapted lenses than on native lenses. That's no surprise. With the MC21, you can only do AFS, single, and not AFC, continuous autofocus. In fact, when you flip the camera to AFC, it tells you to go to AFS, which is way better than the NovaFlex, which won't autofocus at all and will just tell you to switch to manual focus. With both adapters, you can manually focus a drive-by wire lens like this Canon 85-1.2, and the manual focus switch on the lenses function as well. If you use a lens with image stabilization in it, you don't get the IS from the lens, but of course the camera has stabilization, so you still get the in-body IS, no matter what lens you're using. And aperture and focal length are also communicated to the camera with both adapters. Effectively, the main difference between an MC21 adapted lens and a native lens is that the adapted one is slower to autofocus. So you're not gonna be shooting action sports with these, but for portraits, landscapes, and the like, they're great. Hey, before we move on to video, I wanted to tell you that since I have a ton of videos here on YouTube, it can be kind of hard to sort through them and find exactly what you're after. But if you go to my website, photojoseph.com, you'll see on there that you can easily filter all of my videos and other tips by product. And if you go to the top filter by menu and choose hardware, you can type in the name of whatever you're looking for, like S1 or Think Tank or Godox, 
and quickly find all the videos related to that topic. While you're there, check out the membership page too and see the benefits of paid membership like access to hundreds of software training videos, exclusive interviews, and of course, it's a great way to support the free content that I make here on YouTube. All right, now let's look at the video side of things. Sigma was really generous and sent out quite the buffet table of gear. I shot the same setup with most of these lenses so you could compare the looks of them. Now, um, confession time, I kind of screwed up and I shot all these clips at 4K 60, which I intended to do so I could slow some shots down, but I forgot that that meant on the S1 that I was cropping into each lens shooting APS-C instead of full frame. That doesn't change the bokeh, of course, but it does mean we're not seeing the full lens edge to edge. I'm sorry. But hey, for those of you who would shoot 4K 60, this is exactly what you'll get. Okay, uh, these were all shot on the flat color profile on the S1 and captured to an Atomos Ninja Inferno at 4K 60p. Incidentally, this video you're watching now is in 4K 30, so if your device can handle it, hit the little gear wherever it is and choose 4K. Every shot you're about to see here is shot wide open on that lens. I don't have ND filters big enough for most of these lenses, so to shoot wide open, I'm shooting at very high shutter speeds. There isn't much movement in here anyway, but when you see some staccato motion, that's why. I started with the Panasonic 24 to 105 f4 as a reference shot. It's a nice, clean, sharp lens, as you would expect. This is the Nikon 24 millimeter, and you can definitely see some of that glowing creaminess around the edges. Next is the Sigma 18 to 35. I requested this lens specifically because I know it's very popular among GH5 users who like to adapt this to Micro Four Thirds using a Metabones adapter. So I know a lot of you already own it. The Sigma 40 millimeter F1.4 was a beautiful surprise for me. Quite a wide field of view and lovely bokeh. Definitely one for my wish list on b &H. Ah, the Mamiya. I just love it. Check out the bokeh rings in the background. Totally different look. It has that soft, almost dreamy look to it, like an Orton effect, where it's simultaneously soft and sharp. I just can't get enough of this lens. Now for the Canon 85mm f1.2. Very sharp, with super shallow depth of field, and a very smooth, predictable bokeh. Now let's switch to the cinema lenses. Sigma sent three of them, two EF lenses and one PL mount lens. For the EF mounts, I used the same MC21 adapter, and for the PL, I used this Kippon L-mount adapter. Now, I gotta admit, this adapter's not very good. There's a little shim screw in here that I had to completely remove to get the adapter to even lock onto the lens, but there's significant play in the lens without the shim. It still worked perfectly fine, but I definitely prefer a PL mount that doesn't move so much. NovaFlex and Lights both make PL to L-mount adapters that are quite a bit more expensive, but I didn't get to test those. If you've never worked with these types of lenses before, let me give you a brief tour. First off, they're huge. Notice that not only is each ring geared so that you can connect it to a focus or camera control system, allowing you to change focus, aperture, or zoom remotely, but the rings are in the same position and the lens barrel is the same size, so you don't have to readjust the control system when you swap lenses. The aperture on a cinema lens isn't measured in f-stops, but in t-stops or transmission stops instead. The t-stops are the measure of the actual amount of light coming out the back of the lens, not the measurement of the aperture itself like an f-stop is. This allows perfect consistency between lenses. Also, these numbers glow in the dark, which is just awesome. Why don't all lenses do that? The rings are all stepless, of course, and remarkably smooth to use, making it quite easy to rack focus and stop precisely on your mark. And in general, the quality of these lenses is very, very high. There's more to cinema lenses, of course, but those are some of the obvious differences. The first one I used is the 20mm T1.5, giving a beautifully wide shot with virtually no distortion. Then the 18 to 35 T2 zoom. And finally, the 50 millimeter T1.5 on the PL mount. These are all gorgeous, clean lenses with no fringing, no halos, beautiful bokeh, really just lovely, pristine, clean lenses. As with everything, you get what you pay for. I hope this was interesting for you. Now that we know that the Vlog Filmmaker's upgrade for the S1 and the S1H camera itself are coming, or already out, depending on when you're watching this, knowing that you can adapt so many excellent lenses, many that you probably already own, to this full-frame photography and filmmaking system is pretty awesome. If you want to know more about any of these products, there's links below to everything. And of course, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that share button and share it on the socials. And don't forget to check out photojoseph.com as well. See you next time.